What's up everyone? Thanks for tuning into my channel, Jace's Own World. I have a new video for you. I just got my car back from the shop from installing my new X-Clutch Stage 2 clutch with an OEM throw-out bearing. I literally just picked it up and I am driving it home right now. And I just wanted to clip in this video my first impressions of this clutch. Um, so my impressions are very different from my impressions that I had on my self in stage 3 endurance as well as my DKM clutch stage 2. Uh, those clutches were very very heavy pedal feel. I would say the DKM stage 2 clutch had a much heavier pedal feel uh, than the South Bend stage 3 endurance clutch that I uh, just had replaced. Both of those clutches were using the throw out bearing slash slave cylinder that came in their kit. With this X clutch, I am now using the OEM throw out bearing slash slave. And I don't know if it's, uh, if it's because I'm using an OEM one right now or not, but with my X clutch that I have in the car right now and I just picked it up, the pedal is very, very light. It's almost like OEM, and I'm not exaggerating at all. It's literally like OEM. It's not even heavy. Like, it's weird to me. As you can see, with the bouncing around and everything, and the camera, welcome to uh, Tucson, Arizona roads. They're actually doing this road right now. Uh, they're redoing it, but they've been working on it for the last year. It's just beat up, so I can't wait till they get it redone. But besides that, let's get back to the clutch. Um, the pedal is very light, guys. I almost stalled it. I thought something was wrong with the clutch pedal because it was so light. And this is a stage two that can hold over 600 foot pounds of torque, and it uses a six puck clutch disc. It's crazy. It's crazy how light this clutch pedal is right now. So I don't know if that's because I chose to go with the uh, OEM throw bearing slash slave cylinder <laughs> or if this clutch is just freaking awesome. <laughs> uh, I love how the, the clutch pedal does not feel like I'm pushing on bricks. And that's a little bit of an exaggeration. Wow. So like right there, it's taken me a little bit. Of, I haven't stalled it yet, but it's taken me a little bit to get used to this clutch pedal because it's so light. and. I don't know why it's so light, I really don't, but it is, and so I'm loving it, and that means I don't have to slip the clutch or worry about, you know, slipping the clutch so much. I can just basically let it out like it's no big deal. I could probably have, like, it's so light that someone who does not know how to drive a manual, I could probably be confident that they could learn on this car now. Whereas before, the clutch pedal was a little bit heavier that I was not confident. They would just be burning my clutch disc like crazy, slipping it, installing it, and ruining it. So I feel confident with that. Not saying I'm gonna do that, but I do feel confident. That's how light this clutch pedal is right now. It's crazy. So that's the clutch pedal. Uh, let's talk about the grab point. So I literally have put 10 miles on this car right now. So. I, I have no time, <laughs> I don't have much time with this clutch at all. These are just my first impressions. Um, the clutch grab point, so if it's fully depressed, the clutch is probably grabbing like right there, like right there or something like that. And it grabs hard, so you have to be very careful on your, your clutch and your throttle modulation I'm getting a little bit more used to it the more I'm driving right now but like I said the clutch pedal is so light that it's I'm, I'm now I have to retrain my brain like it's an OEM car again even though this clutch can hold way more power than the OEM it's pretty rad so um, yeah so the grab point and then you let it out and it lets out just fine what's up guys it's another day I have about 160 
miles onto my car. I'm still breaking on this X clutch, and right now I am in a different outfit. I'm actually heading to my skills lab for nursing school. So I've been driving on it, I have 160 miles on it, and uh, my impression so far with uh, a little bit more miles um, is that the clutch pedal is exactly the same. Um, it's very light still, but the grabbing point has gone up a tiny, tiny bit more. So if my pedal is fully compressed, instead of it being like right here in the very beginning, um, it's actually more about so right there. So the grabbing point has gone up a little bit more, which is expected because, uh, because it's breaking in. So that's a good sign. Um, there are also no visible leaks underneath the car, so that's always good. The car shifts into every single gear just fine. I also bought Redline MT LV transmission fluid. And uh, the reason why I went with that fluid, I had Motul, I forget what it was uh, before, uh, but I had Motul transmission fluid in it before. And I liked that fluid. It had the exact weight that comes OEM. Uh, but that Redline MT LV fluid, uh, I think it's 75 or 70 W75, something like that. But it's a little bit lower in weight. And um, the reason why I went with that is because here in Arizona, it doesn't get super cold, but in my area it gets pretty cold. So it will actually get down in the low 20s in the winter time and we've actually got a quite a bit of snow this year so um, once it started hitting cold weather that Motul oil was not reacting well to the, the colder climate and when I had my last clutch in with the Motul fluid it would grind into second gear and into third gear uh, for about five minutes and then as the fluid warmed up it would never grind again and it would shift just fine in the summertime it shifted just fine so that that oil weight likes to have a little warmer climates and hot climates um, so I wanted to get rid of that grinding into second and third gear so I went to the forums and everyone said get the redline MTLV so I did that um, and everyone in the forum said this is great, you know, it, get rid, it gets rid of the grinding issues and yada yada. So, um, I did that and so far I have no zero grinding issues. So, that's great. And it's still been in the 30s. Um, it hasn't been as cold as it was a couple weeks ago, but it has snowed a couple times since installing this clutch. And it's worked great. Um, so that's about the fluid. Uh, so it shifts in the gears just fine and great every single time from the very get-go of the morning to the end of the day. Also, I want to talk about the revs a little bit. Uh, the flywheel, I mean the whole the whole package of this clutch was almost five pounds lighter than my South Bend one, but the flywheel specifically was very light on the X clutch and I could really notice that um, when my revs go up, it's it's super fast. Like it's taking me a little bit to get used to on the downshifts and the rev matching. So I'll do a little rev match here. I'll turn my exhaust on so you can hear it. There you go. So it's giving me a little bit used to to the shifts. I'll go from fourth into third rep match. Coming right into a stoplight. So that was a good shift. And now I'm going to heel toe it right here. See, it's, it's still a little bit, it's, it's a, I have to get used to the rep matching a little bit because it revs up so fast that now my brain is telling me to not, not step on the gas so abruptly like I had to with the South Bend. But now I'm under rev matching it because of that. If I if I do it like I normally was with the South Bend, I'm over rev matching it. So I'm I'm trying to find a 
median here. It's, it's usually the third to second that I'm struggling with because it's just a harder gear to get in. Not a harder gear, but it's a harder gear to rep match. Here, I'm in fourth now. I'll go back into third and I'll just rep match it. So that was a good one. Now I'll do a heel toe from third into second. Yeah, I see it's still difficult. So I'm getting used to it, but I'm also being... But I'm also being very uh, like soft on the clutch right now. I'm, I'm trying to shift it quite a bit because I'm in break-in. So once I'm over break-in, I'll, I'll you know get used to it more. But as of right now, I'm not too worried about it. But yeah, the revs rev up really fast. Like here, I'll, I'll just turn it back on and I'll just rev up the car and you guys can hear it. There's my exhaust, I love that. So here we go. shift on it so if I press the clutch in fully and I fully press the gas it'll just be like bah, 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 and that's a safety feature that no lift shift is if you use it so that you're not over revving let's turn that off again <clears throat> that's a good one coming into a stoplight yes it's still difficult but yeah, it revs up really fast, and I really like that about this clutch. It's very fast, and because the pedal is so light, it's actually just like, it's just easier to like just modulate the clutch. I'm not, you know, it's not like the heavy pedal was like hard for me because I, I've never owned an automatic car. I've always driven manuals and <clears throat> been driving since I was 16 years, well, 15, 14 years old with other things, but I've had my license since I was 16. And, um, and <clears throat> it's not like the clutches, heaviness on the past clutches were like bothersome to me. It didn't really bother me. Um, but having a light clutch now is just way easier to, to live with number one and also to modulate on, on this and, and the further, the longer that I drive this car or this clutch, that, you know, like I said, that, that grabbing point is going up a little bit. And so that's better so that, you know, like in the morning when I'm not used to like working my leg, you know, I just woke up or whatever. I'm not like so con <laughs> so unconscious of it gonna just like grab right away, which it was when just was installed so these are things that I'm noticing that are different uh, with this clutch compared to South Bend and DKM because South Bend and DKM had a very similar feel and they were very heavy pedals DKM was heavier than South Bend um, the whole stage 2 stage 3 stuff doesn't make sense because every company is different like stage 3 so stage 2 uh, DKM holds 450 or 440 foot-pounds of torque stage 3 DKM which is the twin disc holds like 660 foot pounds but the stage three south bend endurance which is like higher than their daily that one only holds 580 foot pounds so the whole foot pound difference between the stages are not similar because the stage two of x clutch which is this one right now holds 680 or something like that foot pound so and it's stage two so why does one stage two hold a lot less than the other and another one holds a lot more, blah, 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 blah. Nothing makes sense. So the whole like, I'm stage two, I'm stage three, blah, 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 doesn't make sense to me. I don't tell anyone what stage I am. I just tell them what I have. And that's that's what I do. That's just what, how I am. But uh, let's talk about the clutch chatter while we're driving here. The clutch chatter on the South Bend stage three endurance was really, really, slight like there was not much clutch chatter that was a big benefit of that clutch um, i don't know if that had to do with the motul transmission fluid that i had in it which i think it did um, a little bit because i hear that fluid does bring down the clutch chatter noise quite a bit um, but the clutch chatter on this x clutch with the red line, with the 
Redline MT dash LV fluid, it's it's a little bit more than than the South Bend. So I can definitely hear it. Um, it doesn't bother me because, like I said, I've been running these single mass flywheel clutches on this car for the last seems like four to five years. So, and there's always been clutch chatter, and that's just the way it is with these. So it doesn't bother me at all, but it might bother some of you, but you kind of have to expect when you're getting a single mass flywheel and getting rid of your dual mass flywheel that you're going to have clutch chatter. And the clutch chatter noise differentiates between each brand from what I've from what I've noticed. Like the DKM brand definitely had a lot of clutch chatter. Um, the South Bend brand, not so much, but I don't know if each kit is different. But the South Bend Stage 3 Endurance definitely did not have much clutch chatter. And now this X-Clutch Stage 2 has clutch chatter, but not as much as DKM. So it has a little bit more than South Bend Stage 3 Endurance but definitely not as loud or as much as the DKM stage two. So I would say it's a happy medium. Like I, I don't even notice it. My, my ears just don't notice the clutch chatter anymore. Um, so it's whatever to me. Um, but yeah, I would say it's, it's there, but it's not crazy, crazy, crazy loud to where it's super annoying. So you can barely hear it put on the AC and if you're only next to like a wall like in a drive through or something like that that's the only time you're really going to hear it you know unless you just have your car parked in neutral and the AC is blasting and you're outside it's like whatever so that's not a big deal but it is there it's a single mass flywheel and it's light so you're getting a lot of benefits really light clutch pedal um grabs really well very easy to modulate and the revs are by far the fastest revs that i've ever had in this car due to its lighter whole kit in general but also a lighter flywheel so those are the benefits the non-benefits are um i guess the clutch chatter but you're gonna get that with every single clutch kit you're gonna have with a single mass flywheel if you don't want much clutch chatter with a single mass flywheel go ahead and spend your two thousand plus dollars on a south bend stage three endurance clutch <laughs> is the having a little less clutch chatter worth the extra five or six hundred dollars over this one more like seven hundred dollars i don't think so so that's up to you um it's your money it's your wallet so do what you want but yeah this is my uh, break-in review uh, with this clutch as soon as this clutch is broken in I will make another video uh, with me doing some pulls and then my reaction to how it grabs uh, I'm not going to launch it because doing that with a one-wheel peel on a front-wheel drive is just pointless anyways but that also destroys your clutch a lot faster and I don't want to do that so um, I'll just give a, some, some review. Hopefully that's a, a shorter video um, than I normally make, but I will do that uh, once the clutch is broken in. But yeah, this is my break-in video. I hope you liked it. Thanks for viewing this video. I appreciate that. And uh, please subscribe, like, and dislike, and comment on my channel. And I'll see you on the next one. All right? Peace.